Good afternoon and welcome to your daily dose of Satoshi's news. Today's day is Monday the 27th of June 2022. Without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Buy BSV.live, the best place to buy Bitcoin SV online, the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin. Right, here we go. On with the news. Check this out. Just in. This is from Well Watcher Guru. Uh, so just reported that Tether CTO, that's Chief Technical Officer, says there have been coordinated attacks by traditional hedge funds trying to short USDT. Uh, this could easily be done. This could easily be done because it can easily be manipulated uh, if you've got that kind of money. Because, again, you can only draw out $100,000 worth of, or you can only convert um, $100,000 worth of Tether to uh, uh, to actually USD at a time. But hedge funds can do that and they will crash Tether. There's lots of people out there don't think it can be done, which is why the odds are pretty good, which is why they will attempt it. Uh, it could easily happen. My goodness me. So uh, check this out. More hedge funds are betting against Tether as crypto melts down. Professional investors got interested in shorting Tether after the collapse of another stablecoin, TerraUSD. And this is in the uh, the Wall Street Journal. Again, I don't subscribe here, so I can't really read it all, but we get the gist. Short sellers have been ramping up their bets against Tether, the world's largest stablecoin, amid a broad market sell-off that's called into doubt the financial health of some crypto companies. It should call into account the health of all the crypto companies. In the past month, more traditional head funds have executed uh, trades to short Tether through Genesis Global Trading Incorporated, one of the largest crypto brokerage for professional investors. These trades are worth hundreds of millions of dollars in novel value, said uh, Leon Marshall, Genesis head of institutional sales. He claimed to be, uh, uh, he declined to be more specific. Again, it's just not looking good. They don't want to spook the market, but we know the market will be spooked. Like, oh my goodness. And this was another one. So Justin Voyager Digital has issued a default notice to a Three Arrows Capital for failure to repay a loan of 15,250 BTC and a $350 million USDC loan. Oh, my goodness. So let's have a look at this. Crypto lending firm Three Arrows Capital gets notice. uh, $650 million debt. See what it says here. The troubles of crypto lending firm Three Arrows Capital don't seem to be ceasing. After rumours were floated on the internet, Three Arrows Capital, 3AC, was served with a default notice by Voyager Digital. The notice is regarding failing to uh, repay a debt totaling more than $650 million. Voyager Digital is a crypto application claiming up to 12% profits. The official announcement was made on Monday. Per the statement, Three Arrows Capital has a debt of 15,250 BTC worth $325 million at the time. The 350 USDC to Voyager Digital, Voyager Digital has said that it is still in business. The firm is still fulfilling customer orders and withdrawals. This is in contrast to some other crypto exchanges that were exposed to Three Arrows Capital and had to shut withdrawals. Voyager has uh, access to $775 million worth of uh, credit line it had set up with uh, um, Alameda Research, that's uh, um, Sam Bankman Friedman of uh, FTX Exchange. The firm has said that it may use more if needed. Again, it's just really not looking good, is it? Um, So Voyager Digital's um, CEO, Stephen uh, Enrich, said in a statement, we are working diligently and uh, expediously to strengthen our balance sheet and uh, and pursuing options so we can continue to meet customer liquidity demands. Oh dear, customers want liquidity, they want out. The company has hired Moles and Company to, uh, Moels uh, and Company to serve its uh, financial consultants during this process. This month, investments held by Singapore-based Three Hours Capital were liquidated because they could not fulfill margin requirements. Sue Zhu and Carl Davies, former classmates, founded the crypto fund in 2012. As a result of the Terra Crypto uh, ecosystems and its native token Luna collapse last month, the firm is now facing huge losses. Davies said that Three Arrows Capital had hired legal and financial advisors to find a solution for its investors and lenders after suffering significant losses as a result of the global market sell-off in digital assets. Davies claims that Three Arrows Capital is in, is, um, is investigating options, including asset sales and being saved by another company. 
The fund tries to strike a deal with its creditors to buy more time to devise a plan. The business is still running while searching for a solution. They have no idea that what they're holding is absolute crap. Again, this whole thing uh, hinges on BTC having value, of which it doesn't. It can't go anywhere. It's purely pumped by Tether. Uh, however, there has been no word as to uh, where um, that plan stands. Moreover, Zoo has been surprisingly silent this period of uncertainty. Uh, he last, uh, his last tweet was published on the 15th of June. We were in the process of communicating with relevant parties and fully committed to working this out, I'm sure he is. Three Arrows Capital was one of the many firms affected by the demise of Terra Luna blockchain. It goes to show how vulnerable many of the current systems were. However, it also provides valuable lessons for future firms, investors and projects. Yeah, like what they still they had <laughs> they don't understand um, the five principles that make a digital commodity. Otherwise, they'd be running away. Literally, I'd be running out of BTC, which they will be doing, like it was a house on fire. Like, oh my goodness. Uh, I mean, again, I saw Joshua Hensley's video earlier. Where was, it, I, I did find it quite funny where we've got um, Celsius literally trying to be bailed out by, uh, by Goldman Sachs. And we know what Goldman Sachs do. Goldman Sachs just simply try and repackage the debt and sell it onto the customers for a profit. It's outrageous. Yeah, and then he said... Uh, you know, uh, all, all we need now, all we'd need now is is Coinbase to be bar, uh, bailed out by J.P. Morgan. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, so this one was from uh, CNBC, one of the most prominent crypto hedge funds, just defaulted on a six hundred and seventy million dollar loan. The uh, prominent crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital has defaulted on a loan worth more than six hundred and seventy million dollars. I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's, it's pretty big for the average person. Um, digital asset brokerage Voyager Digital has issued a notice on Monday morning stating that the fund failed to repay the loan of $350 million in the US dollar paid stablecoin USDC and another 15,250 Bitcoin, that's BTC, worth around uh, $323 million at today's price. Prominent crypto hedge fund 3 Arrows Capital has defaulted on a loan worth more than 670 million. Digital asset brokerage Voyager Digital issued a notice on Monday morning stating that the fund failed to repay the loan of $350 million in US dollar peg stablecoin USDC and 15,250 uh, core coin BTC worth around $323 million at today's price. Again, I mean, it's just going to be a reiteration of what we've just what we've just uh, been through there, so don't need don't need to go through it too much, but yeah, you, you get the gist. You get the gist. Let's see what it says about. Um, uh, uh, here we go. Um, Ala, so last week, Alameda uh, Research, FX, uh, FTX founder Sam Bankman Friedman, uh, committed five hundred dollars to financing uh, to. Committed $500, $500 million worth of financing to Voyager Digital, a crypto brokerage. Uh, Voyager has uh, already pulled $75 million from that uh, line of credit. The default of Three Arrows Capital does not cause a uh, default in the agreement with Alameda, the statement said. CNBC did not immediately receive a comment from Three Arrows Capital. So how did it get there? Three Arrows Capital was established in 2017 by uh, uh, Zhu Su and Carl Davies. Zhu is known for his uh, incredibly bullish view of uh, CoreCoin BTC. Oh dear, and that's how they've got themselves into this trouble. He said last year that, well, again, like Michael Saylor telling everybody to mortgage the house, utterly reckless. He said last year the world's largest cryptocurrency would be worth $2.5 million per coin. Uh, but in May this year, as the uh, crypto market began its meltdown, Zhu said on Twitter that his uh, super cycle price thesis was regrettably wrong. Well, again, how can something go up to $2.5 million when there is no demand for it? You only have demand for something that is useful. When something is useless, it is worthless. It's as simple as that. Imagine if uh, Bitcoin was actually useful, like BSV is the genuine Bitcoin that is useful. Every, everybody, every man and his dog would be buying it because it is useful. I mean, it's, it really doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure all this out. I mean, you know, it's it's nuts what's going on at Contagion Risk and all that. You know, I guess this is going to uh, dump the price of BTC even more. If you're holding that shit, hold on to your hats, beep. It is going down. Uh, check this out. Uh, so uh, Coinbase warns users could lose their crypto holdings if the company goes bankrupt. So again, this was back in uh, May and we all know this, but uh, interesting to see this in uh, Business Insider. 
So uh, a few uh, key points here. Coinbase said it uses crypto assets could become company property if it went bankrupt. And we know that's what it seems to be what they're preparing for because uh, they not re don't really seem to be actually doing anything about the issues that they're facing because they know uh, that uh, they, they can't do anything about it because they know that uh, they know Craig is Satoshi and they know Bitcoin is BSV. Uh, the company added the disclosure for the uh, first time in its earnings report Tuesday. Its CEO said shortly after that users' funds were safe and there was no risk of bankruptcy. Oh, it doesn't mean that it, he didn't actually explain how the users' funds were safe. He's just saying that. You know, how many times have we heard safe and effective this year? Good grief. Uh, and there was no risk of bankruptcy. Well, really, that's just an opinion, mate. Good grief. Coinbase, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges, says its users might lose access to the holdings of the company if it went bankrupt. The disclosure was included in the company's first quarter earnings report, and that was the first time the risk factor was mentioned. It also noted that Coinbase held $256 billion in fiat currencies and virtual coins. Uh, because custodially held crypto assets may be considered to be the property of the bankruptcy estate in the event of a bankruptcy, the crypto assets would uh, would hold uh, we hold uh, in custody on behalf of our customers could be subject to bankruptcy proceedings, and such customers could be treated as our general unsecured creditors. The company said. That means that users would lose lose access to their balances because they would become Coinbase's property. Oof. That's why you need to get your funds off exchanges. Um, it's a difficult, uh, it's a different scenario for traditional investments. Many bank accounts, including checking and savings, are insured by the Federal Deposits Insurance Corporation for up to two hundred fifty thousand uh, um, dollars per account if the bank goes under. While the Securities Investor Protection Corp helps um, uh, if a uh, broker or dealer goes bankrupt. Crypto enthusiasts have long held the decentralized movement as, in part, a way to give people complete control and ownership of their finances. That's only the case for those who physically store their cryptocurrency in personal wallets as opposed to a platform like Coinbase. Coinbase does offer a self-custody wallet called Coinbase Wallet. I wouldn't trust that though either. Following the earnings report, which uh, sent the company's stock plummeting more than 23%, it's far more than that now, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong said there is no risk of bankruptcy right now. Ooh, <laughs> not right now, but I wouldn't say that uh, later. Uh, on Twitter Tuesday night, he attempted to reassure users that their funds were safe and apologised for not being more forthright with communicating this risk when it was, uh, um, when it was added. He said the company included the disclosure because of rules recently set by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yeah, it's really not looking good, peeps. Check this one out just for a laugh. Roger says here, <laughs> uh, Roger, uh, laser eyes have blinded much of uh, crypto community that BTC no longer works as peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, but Bitcoin Cash does at any price. Really, I mean, look at this. Is this what you're promoting? Like some little shop in Antigua, maybe? Let's have a look at the statistics of uh, B Crash here, Roger. Hash rate 0.5, network nodes 3.9, transactions 4.7, and block size 0.82. Even BTC has got a larger block size than uh, than B Crash. I mean, it's looks ridiculous. And remember, hash rate is vanity, block size is sanity. That's all you need to know. Right, 13-minute show. We'll leave you there. Hope you enjoyed it as ever. Be aware, take care, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.